video is going to be discussing kin selection in bees, wasps, and ants. If you didn't see my earlier video on kin selection and altruism, check it out. It's basically on building alarm squirrels, and it's titled The Evolution of Altruism. The link can be found here. So, wasps, bees, and ants belong to an order of insects called the Hymenoptera. Insects in this order have a genetic system called haplodiploidy. Haplodiploidy means that the males are haploid and the females are diploid. The way this occurs is that the eggs are produced by a female, and they can develop either into a male or a female naturally. If they're fertilized by a sperm, or not fertilized, is the deciding factor. When eggs are fertilized, they're diploid, and these develop into females. If they're not fertilized, they're termed haploid and develop into males. Um, diploid organisms basically have two copies of a gene, whereas haploid is one copy. So our sperm cells and whatnot, egg cells, are haploid, meaning that they contain half of our genetic information. Us, our body cells, our somatic cells, like a, like a skin cell or something like that, is termed diploid because it carries two copies of the genetic information. That's, that's one from mom, or half from mom, rather, half from dad, so one total. It's a bit confusing. Take a look at this picture. It should help clear things up. So let's compare the relatedness of sisters in diploid species with the relatedness of sisters in haplodiploid species. Keep in mind we're talking about sisters. So to determine relatedness, we have to consider two halves of the genome half inherited from the mother and half inherited from the father. In a species where males and females are both diploid, like us, the independent assortment of alleles will cause about half of the alleles the sisters inherit from their mother to be the same. So, in half of the genome is inherited from the mother, about half will be the same. So that's technically a quarter of the alleles will be the same through the mother. Similarly, independent assortment of alleles will also cause half the alleles the sisters inherit from the father to be the same. So, in half of the genome inherited through the father, about half will be the same. So a quarter of the alleles will be the same through the father. The total relatedness, which we get by adding the proportion of alleles, is the same through the mother and the father. That's one quarter plus one quarter equals a half, meaning that in normal organisms, diploid organisms, half the genetic information is the same between um, two sisters. Once again, we are comparing sisters, and that was for a normal diploid organism. It's a complicated subject and complicated um, scenario, so if you feel the need and you don't quite get it the first try, pause, rewind, etc., take a look at this image, and it should help you out. So now that we've considered the diploid species, where it's half is the relatedness between sisters, let's consider a haplodiploid species. So remember, in a haplodiploid species, the females are diploid and the males are haploid. So, what's the relatedness between these sisters? Well, through the mother, it works just like it does for a diploid species, because after all, the mom is female and therefore diploid. In the half of the genome inherited from the mother, about half the alleles will be the same. So a quarter of their alleles total will be the same through their mother. But on the father's side, there's a big difference. Here, the father is male and is haploid. That means he produces his sperm cells through mitosis, and that each sperm cell has exactly the same chromosomes as there are in every other cell and each sperm cell has exactly the same chromosomes as all the other sperm cells. So all of the alleles inherited from the father are the same between the two sisters. This means that half of the genome inherited through the father is the same as it is, um, I'm sorry, through the, between two sisters. So the population, or the proportion rather, of the whole genome that is the same because of inheritance through the father is one half. So the total relatedness equals one fourth from the mother plus one half from the father, which equals three fourths. So to wrap it up, basically, the relatedness between sisters in a diploid species or diploid organism is one half, but the relatedness between sisters in a haplodiploid species is three-fourths. So by now you're probably hating your life and wondering what's the point of all of this math and genetics. Well, wasps, bees, and ants live in an interesting social structure. Here, the fertile queen is surrounded by sterile workers which help raise the young of their fertile sisters capable of producing it. So, how is this possible? Why would the workers be sterile if the genes which cause it are incapable of being passed on? Their fitness should be zero. Well, this phenomenon is termed eusociality, and it exists because the haploid-diploid condition creates what's termed as supersisters. That is to say, these sterile workers are more closely related to their supersisters, that's three quarters from all the math above, than their diploid animals, or than diploid animals rather, are to their own offspring, that's one half. So, from this perspective, it's more advantageous to help raise the offspring of your sisters than it is to raise your own offspring. 
In fact, it's so advantageous for these organisms to help their sisters that eusociality has evolved independently 11 separate times within the haploid diploid order Hymenoptera. Basically, for these order or for these insects with a strange genetic configuration, their species survives better if they develop a social structure like this. So, with that being said, make no mistake, the interesting social behavior did not cause a genetic change responsible for the haploid diploidy um, in order to further the species. Instead, the interesting social structure likely evolved as a result of the close relatedness of sisters in organisms with this genetic arrangement. So, in other words, in organisms with this freaky haploid diploid genetic configuration, a social structure that favors helping your sisters is advantageous. So, thank you very much for your time, guys. This video is more of one of those for your information, interesting biological tidbit videos demonstrating how evolution really does explain virtually everything in nature. I mean, even the, this freaky situation, which Darwin stated himself would, you know, was a major blow to his theory. Once genetics and the, the mechanisms of genetic inheritance have been identified, doesn't pose a problem at all, and again, the predictions of evolution are fulfilled. Well, I hope it was somewhat followable, and thank you again for your time.